So I got myself a question, um, which I love receiving, because when people send me emails or posts and say, what do you think about this? Uh, that's, that pretty much makes my day. Whenever anyone cares about what I have to say, even if they don't really exist in my uh, physical life and only on the internet, it still makes me feel really good in here. Uh, so the question is from Christopher um, Burl, and because I've never actually met him, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but it's B-O-E-R-L. And he uh, asked me the question related to this book, Thy Kingdom Come, by Dwight Friesen, out of Mars Hill. And um, he says, on page 85, Friesen writes that in addition to allowing new and often fringe voices to the conversation, the internet also connects these groups beyond themselves, thus mediating their extreme, thereby keeping them from developing, quote, uh, totalitarian, heretical, cultish tones. And Christopher's question to me is, this last bit is a quite important development as it ex extends Bimber's theory of accelerated pluralism, at least as far as it pertains to religious organizations. I'm wondering if you, that's me, believe this to be more or less exclusive to religious groups and or other bodies with high levels of social capital. If so, why? If not, why not? Is the presence of face-to-face, in-person contact slash meetup, i.e. church, important? And perhaps most importantly, why do you think this moderation takes place? Are these fringe religious voices still seeking acceptance within the broader body of Christ? Well, sweet Jimmy, Christopher, some of those are awesome questions. Um, I'm going to offer my response to them uh, in no particular order other than the ones that come first. First of all, uh, is meeting face-to-face -face in person with contact meetup groups important? Yes. Why do I think the moderation takes place? So if I understand the question correctly, uh, it's that the internet connects groups of people with similar ideas um, and because it allows other folks in, it moderates, quote, totalitarian, heretical, cultish tones. I don't know if I agree with that. It's easy, I could imagine, to find a group of people who believe exactly what you believe on the internet, to keep talking to each other, to build up some kind of uh, pent-up fervor and do something crazy that is in fact exactly totalitarian. Um, maybe not totalitarian, but certainly uh, extremist and potentially terroristical, which is now a word. Um, it, I mean, there, there are examples of people who are kind of terrorist cells connecting on the internet and talking only to each other on private bulletin boards and then ended up going off and doing something nuts. So um, I don't think that the internet as such inherently protects against extremism. So that part, uh, I, I think, is, is, is not quite uh, clear to me. I do think it prevents from them from developing totalitarian things because totalitarianism, as I understand it, is always about the dominant culture. And kind of uh, inherently, if there's a group of marginalized voices that is finding joy in finding each other as marginalized voices, they're not going to become totalitarianism because they don't have the power. If they had the power, they'd be in control in the first place and they wouldn't need to resort to finding each other on the internet. That's my guess. Um, in terms of heretical and cultish tones, well, there's a couple flavors here. One, in terms of heresy goes, I don't have a lot of room for heresy. Heresy presumes some kind of fixed dogmatic standard of authenticity uh, you know, in terms of a certain page. And um, as far as talking to people on the internet, uh, I'm not exactly clear what would be the test of authenticity. Uh, do they sound like they're being honest with you? That's as close as you can get as far as I can tell. So I don't even think that the word heretical or heresy applies to online conversation. I mean, what, what would it be? I think underneath there, Christopher, you're presuming that online conversation is somehow um, a parallel to institutional church, and, and I don't think it is. Is it church in the capital C sense of the word? A Catholic, a truly Catholic universal ch church? You know, um, yes because it's the body of Christ, which is in the body of the believers. Is it a, um, a church in the sense of an institutional affiliation that has creedal statements or adherences to which there can be heresy? No, I don't think so. Um, I don't even know what that would look like. So I don't think the word heresy applies. Um, and also, um, you said, um, do you believe the accelerated pluralism 
uh, to be exclusive to religious groups? Two-part question. And or bodies with high levels of social capital. So the first question is, do I believe it to be exclusive to religious groups? No. I happen to be sitting uh, next to someone. She's right there off camera. Make a noise. I'm not here! Who is connected to all sorts of people in the Lindy Hop uh, swing dance scene that probably wouldn't have been connected to her 10 years ago. No way. Because of the internet. Uh, I don't think that you would ever consider asking the question regarding Lindy Hop jazz swing dance, is there a possibility for them to become totalitarian, heretical, and cultish? <laughs> so that's something to consider because there's all sorts of communities which connect on the internet and develop real face-to-face -face relationships as a result of it. I'm not saying that always happens, but just because people are connecting on the internet and happen to be people interested in religion doesn't make it the case that they'll become totalitarian, heretical, and cultish. So ask yourself the question the other way around. Do you think it's possible that swing dancers could become cultish, heretical, and totalitarian? I think there's something to be learned in framing the question that way. Um, second of all, do you think it's exclusive to religious groups, I just talked about that, and or bodies with high levels of social capital? That's a more interesting question to me. And it starts in two places. One's very pragmatic. If you don't have access to the internet on a regular basis, I don't think you're going to be building communities on the internet. So in that case, no, um, I don't. Uh, high levels of social capital. Well, that suggests already a network of people you're connected to. And, and there's a significant amount of work um, that suggests that networking is one of the greatest assets to people with privilege. You have connections. Um, so I think then you can employ those connections, you know, in terms of names of people who've written books that you've read, access to books, the fact that you can read, all those other kind of extenuating circles, um, to use those to turn into developing relationships online. Is it possible that people without social capital, so isolated people, um, have connections to each other online? Yes. Have you heard of World of Warcraft? Um, all sorts of folks that don't have, I can think of a couple people offhand that I know, no names, who don't have very good social skills, certainly don't have a whole lot of social capital, um, other than the fact that they they have some amount of fiscal capital and therefore have the ability to like pay people money, um, who have all sorts of online networks because they're connected to other people who play World of Warcraft or uh, you know, back in the day, EverQuest, any of those things. So I don't think it's, it's exclusive to people with social capital. Um, so what's the, what's the bottom line for this, Christopher? Um, the internet is not magical. Uh, it is another means of communication. It is a media of communication. It is a medium, and therefore it influences how we connect with one another. And it is changing how we connect and how we perceive, but I don't think it is inherently or essentially anything. It doesn't lead us towards a better church or a better world or a better dance community. It also doesn't lead us away from a better church, a better world, or a better dance community. It is up to us to figure out how we will employ it and to reflect how it influences us to then make the decisions as capable, rational people to figure out how it is the world um, will change around us. Sometimes we'll be able to affect it, and sometimes it will affect us, and we'll have to throw our hands in the way in the air and say, you know what, man plans and God laughs. Or, if you were less sexist, humans plan and God laughs.